welcome us all to today, the third Sunday of the month of uh, November, the 19th of November 2023. A day that the Lord has made, and he made it for this reason, that we might rejoice and be what? Glad. A deep revelation there. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. It's a choice. I will rejoice. It takes your will to rejoice. It takes your will to praise God. Several things might tell you, shut up like they said to Bartimaeus. Crying out to Jesus for help. The crowd said to him, shut up. But the Bible says he cried out the more, louder. Don't let anything stop you. Can you lift up your hands and say, nothing will ever stop me. I have made up my mind. I will serve the Lord. And I will praise him. And I will praise him. I got my mind made up and I can't turn back because I've got to see my Jesus someday. I got my mind made up and I can't turn back because I've got to see my Jesus someday. Goodbye world, I turn my back to you now, I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life, I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life, goodbye world, goodbye Satan, goodbye to sin, hallelujah, I made up my mind. To go God's way the rest of my life. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. Hallelujah. Receive grace to do even as you have sung this morning. Amen. Our minds are made up. It's too late for the devil or for anybody to try to talk us out of following Jesus. Follow, follow, I will follow Jesus anywhere, any day, I will follow him. Follow, follow, I will follow Jesus anywhere he leads me, I will follow him. Amen. There is power in what you say. Don't ever entertain the thoughts that you could fall out of faith. You could give up on Jesus. Your mind is made up. And no matter what, the circumstance or the situation or the condition is, Job said, even if he slays me, God kills me, I will still follow him. Get to that point where you are irrevocably committed. Your mind is so made up that anybody pleading with you is just wasting their time. Hallelujah. Mm. If there be ties, if there be highways that could still take you back to where you left, then severe them. Even if they are relationships. No relationship should ever contend with your relationship with Christ. Paul writing about this saying in Romans chapter 8. What shall we say to all these things? If Christ be for us, who can be against us? And what can separate us from the love of God and from the love of Christ? Say, no, neither power, principality, not death, not challenges of this world, nothing shall be able to separate us from the love of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. 
receive the grace Amen. to run and not be weary, Amen. to walk and not faint, Amen. to march upon the wings like the eagle, Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Once again, I welcome us and uh, I welcome all those who are worshiping with us online. We love you and we appreciate that you are there. And we always be longing to have you anytime you are in this territory. And if you are in the territory, there's nothing like being in the house. Nothing like being in the house. Yes, God is everywhere. But he had asked his people to gather. Hebrews chapter 10, Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25. The Bible said, do not neglect. Don't neglect your fellowship, your gathering together. He says, even as you see the day drawing near, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Which day is he talking about? The day of the coming of the Lord. Every day draws us nearer to the coming of the Lord. Earlier this morning, somebody, a colleague of mine, we worked together. He was in the military uh, from Romania, about 25 years or there, about 27 years actually. So he was asking me about Jesus' is coming. And we spent some time talking about, you know, the stages of his coming and what he's coming for. Amen. Amen. Yeah. The Lord is coming soon. The Christians who went before us Amen. greeted each other with Maranatha. Mara Atta. The Lord is coming soon. That was their greeting. Each, each time they met themselves, like some would say Shalom, what they would say, Maranatha. The Lord is coming soon. It's in the Bible. The Bible says, as it was in the day of Noah, Luke chapter 17, they were marrying and giving a marriage, building houses, going to work, and how everything was just going. But he said, for they knew it. The flood came. As it was in the day of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Noah. If the Lord is not going to come again, then let's forget about gathering and meeting. Because then everything about the scripture is false. Because Jesus himself said it. John chapter 14, he said, Behold, I go to prepare you a place, and after that, I will come again and take you that where I am, there you may also be. It's what the Bible calls the believer's hope. Then when Jesus was ascending and they were looking up, the, 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 an angel came around and said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing into heaven? This same Jesus, not another one. He said, this same Jesus, as you have seen him go, you come back. Amen. Amen. Then Paul said it so many times and ways. In the church in Thessalonica, Thessalonica is in Greece. I have some people in, from Greece uh, in my place of work. And we talk about these places where Paul went. And th these things are real. Huh? If it's made up, then people from these places will come and tell us. Those places Paul went to, they are still there. Hierapolis and all those places, they are still there. So the, among the Christians, some, some, some of them were dying. And then they were concerned. What will happen to these people who have died? That's why Paul wrote First Thessalonians chapter 4. He said, we shall not all sleep. A word he uses for death. But he says, at the blast of the trump of the archangel, then the dead in Christ will rise. And we who are alive, even Paul thought that he would still be alive when Christ would come. He said, we, including himself, who are alive, we then Catch up with them. That is where we find, get the word rapture. Cut, catching up. To be cut up. That's the meaning of rapture. Taken out of this world. 
I explain all this to this man, friend early this man. But the Bible says, be ye ready. For in such an hour as you think not, the son of man shall come. Always, every day, asking yourself, am I ready? Lord, prepare me. Lord, help me. Search me and see if there be anything. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, 1 Corinthians chapter 9 from 24 to 27, he says, I don't box like one who doesn't have a, 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 you know, a, a target. But I box my body. I discipline myself so that after I preach to others, I will not be disqualified. That is the word cast away. Disqualified. One nation have just been stripped of the Olympic gold. The one. Why? They were disqualified. They felt they drug test. Or they ran in somebody else's leg. Or they pushed down somebody. You will not be disqualified in Jesus' name. Amen. But you must work on yourself. The Bible says, work out your salvation. Something has been worked into you when you came to believe in Christ. He says, work it out. Daily basis. There are definite things for us to do. Another scripture says, put off. There are things to put off. The anger, the unforgiving spirit, the bitterness, the quarreling, the grumbling and murmuring and the gossip. He said, put them off. It's in your hands. The grace is there. Titus chapter 2. From verse 11, he said, The grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men. Grace is God's favor. Grace is also divine ability that enables any person that believes in Christ to live a life which is humanly impossible. So grace is God's ability that he gives to us. So no excuses. I can't, I can't. Yes, you can't on your own. But grace has been released. Somebody say, I receive the grace receive to, the live grace. to live a life that will please God. I receive the grace to live a life that honors God in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. I don't know how I fell into this. The whatever is not by accident. It must be somebody's word this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord, as we bring your word this morning, Holy Spirit. May your word bring healing, bring deliverance. Bring salvation. Restore somebody. Encourage somebody. Motivate somebody. Release hope to somebody. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we're going to pray for some of our brethren who have been not very well. Uh, I don't know if uh, I have your permission to say this. Who are you? Yes or no? Okay. Brother Manuel has been hospitalized. Um, he went for a procedure, uh, which was okay. And then a um, few days after, he started having some pains and he, he had to go back to the hospital. Um, like I said to him this morning when I saw him, I wasn't expecting him because we were exchanging some texts over uh, yesterday night. And from what he told me, he was still going to be kept for another week. But with a condition that, which I think enabled him to be here this morning. And we want to thank God that he's perfecting his healing. I didn't uh, publicize that because like I had to ask for his permission this morning. And like I've said to us, unless I have your permission to bring up your issue to the public, there's something about privacy and confidentiality. So if you want anything that you know you are going through, whether it's good or not so good, then I will need your permission. Amen. Amen. Okay. But we want to thank God that he still had to come. And he came, showing that his heart and mind. Are here. The Lord will perfect the beginning of your body. Amen. In Jesus' name. I told him he's so much loaded and there's so much ahead of him that the devil is so afraid of him. Uh, you know, when he, the devil is so afraid of you, he starts attacking. He starts attacking. That's why Jesus, he, he killed everybody that was born uh, about the same time with Jesus because he was after him. <laughs> 
you know, he knew what the future meant for, for him as Satan. And so let's destroy him now. The same thing with Joseph, let's destroy him now. And I can carry on. If you've heard of Dr. Paul N.H., a medical doctor himself and the wife, but called by the Lord and they left medical practice, but each time he talks, you can see medicine flowing everywhere. They are built a very big church, have one of the largest churches in any part of the world. My wife and I and our, the rest of our family, our daughter, our son, daughter-in-law, we've all been there several times. Massive structure that sits not less than 100,000 people. No pillars. No pillar anywhere. Why am I bringing him up? Say so when he was growing up, he used to faint every now and then. He would faint. He would converse. And they would run back home and call the mom. Come to school. Your, 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 your son is down. The devil so challenged him because he knew what Massive work is doing all over the world. Massive work. Amen. Amen. So if you're ever facing challenges, don't think that it's not for your good. There must be something the devil is fighting. But somebody said the devil is a liar. Say it like you know what you're saying. Say it like you believe what you are saying. And he's not just a liar, he's a loser. Somebody said the devil is also a loser. He's a loser. And he has lost every battle he's fighting in your life Amen. and in your family. Amen. The Bible says, whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. You are born of God. Whatsoever, not just whosoever, but whatsoever. Even your business, because it's born of God, Jesus. overcomes Amen. the world. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Whatsoever that is born of God, you are born of God. You, John chapter 3 says you are born of the spirit and of the water. You proceed from God. You are an overcomer. You are more than conquerors. Amen. Am I speaking to somebody this Amen. morning? Somebody say, I'm not a victim. I'm not a victim. I am a victor. I'm a victor. And I'm victorious. I'm, I'm an overcomer. I'm a I reign and rule with Christ. I, I am seated together with Christ. Together in the heavenly places. Heavenly far above principalities and powers. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And this challenge to our health is part of what we might just mentioned this morning. Actually, the Bible study we had on Tuesday was going to be on healing, the God of miracle. I have finished preparing that Bible study. You know. Then we left it. And we had to keep to our team. Because at times when God wants to do something, the devil can try to shift your attention. And make you begin to walk according to your circumstances, not according to what God has told you. Mm -hmm. Are you getting what I'm saying this morning? Mm -hmm. God has already given you a direction or a directive. And then the devil comes like he came to Jesus say, God have just said you are my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. But if you are the son of God, you can turn this stone into bread if you are the son of God. It's always coming to challenge whatever. God has given us a word, and that word is praise. And I believe that through that praise, God will settle things. Amen. We've been praying, but he just said, praise me. And so this morning, I'm going to be talking about the express of praise. The express of praise. The hallelujah. Amen. I will use about two, three examples also for the sake of time. We, we, we're, we're not, we're, we're still in line. Second Chronicles chapter 20. The exploits of praising God. You can make it more properly like that God, when we talk about praise. Um, we handled understanding biblical and Christian praise. That was the first. Then the second Sunday was our mission Sunday. And we looked at mission. The Bible study was on understanding biblical and Christian worship. And we looked at worship. Incidentally, we couldn't record. We are trying, searching for that, which is why when you meet some of the IT people like Brother Emmanuel, you know, wasn't there. 
and we were searching until it was sunny. At the end, they said, try this. So we couldn't record. So we can still do that teaching some other time. But I'm bringing a teaching this morning on the exploits of praising God. Second Chronicles chapter 20. The exploits of praising God. Let's read from verse 1. Thank you for bringing it on the screen, Brother Brian. It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Verse 2. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat saying, There are coming a great multitude against thee from behind the sea on this side Syria. And behold, they be in Hazazel Taman, Hazazel Taman, which is Engedi, carry on. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask the help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Verse 5. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem and in the house of the Lord before the new court. And said, O Lord God of our fathers, art thou not, art not thou God in heaven, and rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the hidden, and in thy hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee. Verse 7. At not thou, our God, who did drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel. You see, this argument about who owns the land of Palestine, it didn't start today. Mm -hmm. But this was Jehoshaphat praying at that time and saying, Lord, you drove these people and gave us their land. <laughs> I, I'm surprised. I mean, I mean, I'm even shocked, but at times it doesn't shock me so much. Because some are Christians, but they are very ignorant. Mm -hmm. And they are not able to decide on whose side they are. In every situation, even when, 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 when something is wrong, if God is on that side that is wrong, make sure you are also on that side, wherever God is. Because there are so many who call themselves Christians who are going about joining protests against Israel. So many. And I'm saying it to us. Don't go out there and join them. Don't just use your senses to judge what's going on. But ask, where is God? Moses came down from the mountain and asked, who is on the Lord's side? Make sure in any and every situation you are on the side of the Lord. Don't use your senses. Your senses are too limited to grasp this God. His ways are unsearchable. His deeds are unfathomable. You can't even get to the depth. Jehoshaphat is raising this issue. Say, you gave us this land. You drove them away. And if you don't think God has the right to give anybody anything, including land, <clears throat> Psalm 24, verse 1, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The earth is the Lord's. If he sees, he can give it to anybody he chooses. He removed Saul from being the king of Israel and he put David there. Why? Daniel chapter 2 says he, re he removes kings and he puts kings. He changes times and seasons. He is God. He doesn't need anybody's permission to do anything in his world. The world he created and put people there. You can't be too uh, 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 sympathetic than God. He sent Saul, King Saul, to go and kill everybody in Amalek. Some people still have issues with that. And I have no issue with that. <clears throat> is there any life that is 
Not as important as another life. No. I love the people of Palestine. Some of them are Christians. I don't just love people because they are Christians. I love them because everyone is created. Everyone, whether Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, whatever. You don't worship anything. You are atheist. You don't even believe in God. I just love you because you are a human being. And that's why I call everybody brother. Everybody, woman I see is sister. There's a common brotherhood and sisterhood that by creation unites us. And we must just love people, not because they are Christians, but because they are people. Should anybody be dying in Gaza? No. Trying to use all those little babies in the incubator and the intensive care unit to try to manipulate the emotions of the world against against Israel. And nobody's talking about 1,400 people that were slaughtered just like that. This was a provoke thing. If Hamas had stayed in their territory without going there to slaughter Israel, Israel would not be doing what they are doing. Oh, pastor, are you, are you into politics? I'm into politics. <laughs> politics is about control of resources. And that's why we have allowed all the, the people who should not be in politics to be there. Mm -hmm. And Christians are not there. And they are making laws, even teaching our children same-sex eh, 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 education in, the, in, 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 in nursery school. Mm. We better wise up. The Bible said the children of this world seem to be wiser than the children of the kingdom. But not anymore. Not as long as we are here. Amen. Amen. Now, this is a long reading. So, let me go to breaking it down for the, the sake of time. Many nations gathered against Israel. So, you must know that this is not the first time. They attacked the people of Judah. And as we read, Jehoshaphat was the king of Judah at this time. So he was afraid, and that fear led him to God. David said, when I am afraid, I pray, I call on the Lord. Nobody will kill you because you are afraid. Amen? Mm -hmm. <laughs> fear comes to people. But what you do when the fear comes? Fear of whatever. Fear of failure, fear of defeat. Fear of rejection. Fear of death, fear of sicknesses and disease. Fear of growing old. And looking so handsome and beautiful as you grow older. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All sorts of fears. Whatever fear you have, take your fears to the Lord. He went to the right place, the right source. Whatever issue you have, whatever challenge you have, whatever confronts you, you must know the right place to go to. Where do you go to seek for help first? You start calling who you know, who you don't know. In my place, a woman will start saying, dimly, my husband do. <laughs> huh? I mean, your husband can be still be there. We had a head of state who was everything, was killing people anyhow. This was 90, from 95, 93 to 98. It was so powerful, everybody was afraid. People were running out of the country. One of the persons was a, a, an environmental an environmentalist, you know, campaigner, activist. In fact, that was in the very region we were living in. We were living in the city of this man. So they caught up with him and alleged all sorts of things and sentenced him to death. The world was pleading. Everybody was UK, United States, because it's a very popular man. Quickly they arranged for him, took him from there, just put him through the gallows and put his head there and chopped his head. He was so powerful, he claimed that he had had women from all over the world, apart from India. So they arranged some Indian women for him. And they were in a big party. 
Hell and Haiti, but we are told this is a party that is always going on. One of them left the party around 3 a.m., his second man. But by 5 o'clock, he was a dead man. 5 o'clock, the same day, was a dead man. With all the security, why I'm telling you this story, with all the security around him, how did death pass through those security? I have to tell you, no matter where your trust and confidence is, they cannot protect and keep you as much as God. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into him and they are safe. Run into the name of the Lord. Call upon me in the day of trouble, the Lord say. Call upon me in the day of trouble. Once anything comes, turn to the Lord. Or even before they come, turn to the Lord. Let there be no other thing. It's not your money that will deliver you in the days of anything. It's not who you know and who you don't know, your connections and your schoolmates and all that, your knowledge of this or that, professional now knowledge. And all. It's God. God. Let God be central in our thought that we run to him in every situation. Hallelujah. He ran to the Lord, he gathered the people and began to pray. This was a wise king. And this was a, 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 a scripturally knowledgeable king. Look at his prayer. We can spend time analyzing his prayer. The way he prayed. And then you ask yourself, is my, my, the content of my prayer, if they were written down, would they make so much sense? Would they show that there is a lot of deposit and debt in me that can flow from me to God in my prayer? It's a challenge to grow your prayer life. And like he said, prayer is taught. The disciples of Jesus watched him several times pray and they say, Lord, teach us to do what? To pray. So it's taught. But the spirit of prayer is caught by being among those that pray. By seeking to learn from them. So there is the teaching, which is a theory. There is the practice. And like a little boy learning to crawl or to talk, you begin to learn. And so if you have been a Christian for the last six months, there, there's a level you should be in. And not to talk about when you have been a Christian for one year, two years, six years, seven years, ten years. Grow up your prayer life. Amen. Now take it to eight. He began to pray and to call on the Lord. Carry on to the next. These are still his prayer to nine. And he said to them, You said to us, Lord, if when evil cometh upon us as a sword, judgment or pestilence or famine, we stand before this house and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction. He's bringing God's, taking God's word back to God. You said this. You promised that in your covenant. You told us this. What a way to pray. Lord, you said in your word, if any is sick, let him call the elders and let them anoint the sick with oil and pray. And the prayer of faith will deliver James chapter 5, verses 14 to 17. You are giving God back his word. You said in your word that he himself took our affliction and pain. He bore our grief. And he was wounded for our transgression by his stripes, and we are healed. And because of that, Lord, I ask for my healing. I make a demand on the basis of your word. Take us to the next. So that connects prayer to the word. The more word loaded you are, the more enrich your prayer life. It's not like God is after all your words. No, it's not in too many words. But when an adult is still speaking like, uh, you know, a, a one-year-old, something is wrong, whether physically or spiritual. Amen? Amen? You get worried about that child. He's not talking the way he should be talking at this level. And why don't we get worried spiritually too? When we're not showing growth and maturity. Paul says when some are supposed to be teaching all that. They are still 
you know, learning. Receive grace to grow in every area of your life. Yeah. In love for the word and all that. And then he said to him, Now behold, the children of Ammon and Moab and Maser, whom thou would not let Israel invade. When they came out, I mean, this is just too much for us to talk about. He said, when we are coming out of Egypt, you told us, don't touch these people. Just leave them alone. Go your way. But now they have come to attack us. Carry on. Verse 11. Behold, I say, how they reward us. 12. Then he began to pray. Oh, our God, we dare not judge them. For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do. But our eyes are on you. This is where we get the song. Oh love, our eyes are on you. Be magnified. Oh love, be magnified. Be magnified. Be magnified. Oh love. You are highly exalted, and there is nothing you can't do. Oh, love, our eyes are on you. Be magnified, oh, love, be. Okay, I begin to read from here. Verse 13. He says, All the men of Judah with their wives and children and little ones stood there before the Lord. They stood there before the Lord. Verse 14. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, son of Zechariah, the son of Benair, the son of Jael, the son of Metanai, a Levite and the descendant of the of the uh, Asaph, as he stood in the temple, in this assembly, and he brought a word and said, he said, listen, King Jehoshaphat, and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you, do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is this word speaking to somebody this morning? Amen. I don't know what challenge is confronting you, what issues you are dealing with. I don't know what your circumstances are. Immigration issues, marital issues, financial matters, health-wise, whatsoever it is. You heard him say, Lord, look at how big and vast they are. We can't undo them. But our eyes are on you. May your eyes not be on your problems. Amen. May your eyes not be on the challenges you face. Amen. The Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. And again, I believe it, it, it's in either Psalm 37, either verse 5, where it says, they looked up unto him, and their faces became radiant, and they were not uh, ashamed. What are you focusing your attention on? Your lack your scarcity, your insufficiency, what you don't have. Whatever takes your attention gets magnified. The Bible said Jesus was walking on that water that was very turbulent and they thought they were going to drown. And when he said, come, Peter left the boat and started walking on the sea. See, as long as he kept his gaze and focus on Jesus, he was walking on the water. When I gaze at some point, he said, is it me, Peter, walking on water? <laughs> I'm going to write books when I finish this experience. Uh, people must hear my voice. Like one man of God told me, said in the next, in the next few years to come, everybody in this city will know about me. They'll be talking about me. It hasn't happened 20 years after. Because it was all about him. You can't take God's glory and expect to be exalted and magnified. And the Bible says, Peter removed his eyes from Jesus and began to look at the, the, the billows of the sea, the waves of the sea, the wind. And immediately what happened? 
He began to do what? To sink. When you focus on your problem, there is no doubt you got issues. Mm -hmm. But don't make them your waking thought, your sleeping thought, carry, going on the road, carrying that problem. What should you do with them? First Peter chapter 5, verse 7 and 8. He said, casting all your cares and worries and anxieties upon me. How? Because I affectionately care for you. I like the way that version of the Bible puts it. Affectionately. We used to write letters like that. Yours affectionately. I hope this my missive will meet you flowing in the ocean of good health. You know, recently I was reading that kind of letter. It was so, it was so, <laughs> no, not that I wrote it. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Who says you can't laugh in the church? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, you know, yours affectionately. He said, for he affectionately carried for you. That is tender loving care of God. Love. He doesn't just care, but he lovingly cares. So each time that worry comes up, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I cast this back to you. You say, give it to me. I give it to you. And I refuse to worry. Hallelujah. Amen. And when you do that, then you must replace it with something. With praise. Let's go ahead because we just have to summarize there. He said to them, do not be afraid or discouraged because this of this vast army for the battle is not yours. He said, tomorrow, verse 16, march down against them. They will be climbing up by the pass of Ziz and you will find them at the end of the gorge in the desert of Jericho. You will not have to fight this battle. Take up your position. Stand firm and see the deliverance of the Lord will give you. This was the same instruction that, you know, the Lord and Moses gave to Israel in, in, in Exodus chapter 14, you know, where he said to them, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. For the Egyptians you see today, you shall see them no, no more. more. Stand still. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 15, verse 57. First Corinthians 15, verse 57. <laughs> he says, be steadfast, immovable. By faith, stand your ground. And do the work of the Lord. Stand firm. Don't become so jittery. Because in that jittery state, you, you become confused. You begin to make wrong choices and decisions about what to do and what not to do. Be composed. Put yourself together. First Samuel chapter 30, David came back. His camp had been ransacked and everything taken away, including his wives and children. And those of his vast army following him. And the Bible said they wept. They even wanted to stone their commander. Like he brought this trouble on them. They wept until nobody could comfort the other. Everybody was just weak. But verse 6 said, But David encouraged himself in the Lord. Receive encouragement this morning. Amen. Amen. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Amen. Begin to speak faith back to your spirit. I am more than conquerors and I'm overcomer. I am born of God and because I'm born of God, whatsoever is born of God overcomes. He that is in me is greater than he that is against me. The weapons of my warfare are not kind of mighty through God to the pulling down of uh, stronghold. I put on the whole armor of God. The helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith in my left hand side and the sword of the spirit in my right hand side and the belt of truth. I put on the shield of the gospel of peace and having done all I stand. I stand therefore against the wives of the enemy. Speak to yourself. Speak this scripture. And I call it spiritual psyching up. Psych yourself up. That's what faith is about. Faith talk. Faith confession. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, he said to them, take up your position and stand firm and see the deliverance the Lord will give you. O Judah and Jerusalem, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. Verse 18. Jehoshaphat bowed with his face to the ground, and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down in worship before the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. They fell down in worship. They have this vast army confronting them, different nations, but they fell down in worship. The exploit of praise. Then, verse 19, then some Levites from the Kohathites and the Korahites stood up and praised the Lord the God of Israel with a very loud uh, voice. 
the exploit of praise. Verse 20. Early in the morning, they left for the desert of Tekoa. As they set out, Joseph stood and said, Listen to me, Judah and the people of Jerusalem. Have faith in the Lord your God, and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets, and you will be successful. I like the way. Okay, you're not back to, to, to Second Chronicles. I, I leave you there and go. But he says, you know, have faith in the Lord your God and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets and you will be successful. After consulting the people, Joseph had appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness. As they went out at the head of the army saying, give thanks to the Lord for his love endures yes, forever. forever. He set up a choir. You have a vast army confronting you. He set up a choir to praise God. You must be out of your mind. Amen? Mm -hmm. And it takes this being out of your mind to really win in life in our work with God. Look at what happened verse 22. As they began to sing and praise the Lord. Somebody said the Lord. The Lord. The Lord. You know why? <laughs> because he said, He that praises me glorified me. I dwell in the midst of the praises of my people. As they began to praise, something happened. The Lord rose up. Praise exalts God. And anything that exalts and promotes God, demotes Satan, breaks him down. If God dwells in the midst of the praises of his people, then nothing that is not of God can be there. That is why when we can start praising and sicknesses we check out. Diseases we check out. Bodies will be lifted. Battles are settled. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So as they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Messiah who were invading Judah. And they were defeated. Somebody said defeated. defeated. So shall all your enemies be defeated. Amen. Even in this month as you continue to praise the Lord. So shall your enemies be defeated. Amen. He said the men, verse 23, of Ammon and Moab rose up against the men from Mansia to destroy and annihilate them. And they finished slaughtering the men from Seir. They helped to destroy. Now this was the divine tactics. Confusion in their midst. So all the people that came out against Judah now fought among themselves. Today, from today going forth, all your enemies will fight among themselves. Amen. They will kill and destroy themselves. Amen. Now, Moab rose up against Ammon. And Ammon, then when I uh, finish the other one, then finish Mansia. So shall your enemies be annihilated in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He, says, he says, you know, verse 24, when the men of Judah came to the place that overlooks the desert and looked toward the vast army, they saw only dead bodies lying on the ground. No one had escaped. None of your enemies shall escape. Amen. In this season as you praise God, none of them shall escape. Amen. The financial issues will not escape God's attention. Amen. The marital issues will, will not escape His attention. Amen. Whatever issues you have, none shall escape. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So Jehoshaphat and his army and his men went to carry off their plunder and they found among them a great amount of equipment and clothing and also articles of value more than they could take away. There were, was so much plunder that it took three days to collect it. Amen. Amen. From the defeat of your enemies, I declare, <laughs> you will have several days of, 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 uh, of uh, approved looting. Amen. Approved looting. Amen. Now, Jesus said, Matthew 12, chapter 12, verse 29. Say, nobody can go into the house of a strong man and remove anything unless he does what? Binds a strong man. Through your praise, which invited God and he took over your battle, you bound the strong man. What do you now do? You go in and take what belongs to you. Now I say, go in and receive your help. Amen. Go in and receive your immigration documents. Amen. Go in and receive your, 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 your mar mar marriages. Amen. Receive your fruitfulness. Amen. Receive your promotions. Amen. Receive the open doors. Amen. Receive the favor you've been asking for. Amen. Receive the approval you've been desiring. Amen. Receive divine connections Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And even if I've not mentioned whatever it is you desire, I declare that as the Lord is giving you victory in this month of praise, 
that you will recover your possessions that the enemy has stolen and taken. Amen. It took them three days to gather what the, what the enemy came to battle with against them. So what the enemy thought for evil now turned out for their good. good. Their needs were met. Why? Because they praised God in the midst of this. I'm going to leave the rest. The other things about the exploits of praise. This is just too much to be one, one message. I don't want to extend it. But on the fourth day, look at what happened, verse 26. On the fourth day, they assembled in the valley of Berakah, where they praised the Lord. So before the battle, they praised the Lord. The Lord gave them victory. They seek him back to praise him. That's what is called backward praise. You come to give your testimony, that's a backward praise. Amen? Amen. You are praising him post what he has done for you. But there is a forward praise. When you are praising God in anticipation of what he's yet to do for you. Amen. Amen. You are praising him in, 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 in anticipation of the celebrations you will have. Your situation has not changed, nothing has, but you are praising him knowing that this praise will bring that celebration, will bring that victory that you desire. It took them four days, and in this valley they met, and they praised the Lord. And this is, this is why it is said, that valley is called the Valley of uh, Beraka. Beraka means praise. Beraka means praise. Then, led by Jehoshaphat and all the men of Judah and Jerusalem, return joyfully to Jerusalem, for the Lord has given them cause to rejoice. May the Lord give you cause to rejoice in this Amen. moment. This somebody here, I say, may the Lord give you a cause to rejoice Amen. and to celebrate. Amen. In this month, going forward, they entered Jerusalem and went to the temple of the Lord with harps and, and, and lutes and, and trumpets. Verse 29. The fear of the Lord came upon all the kingdoms of the countries when they heard how the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel. And the kingdom of Jehoshaphat was at peace, for his God had given him rest on every side. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May your kingdom, your territory, be at peace. And may the Lord give you rest on every side. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Let's go ahead to bless the name of the Lord for his word this morning. The exploits of praise, praising God. You're not wasting your time lifting up hands. You're not wasting your time dancing in his presence. Amen. Praise is a powerful weapon of warfare. It's a powerful weapon. Whether it is corporately when we gather here or in your house, learn to praise God. Learn to praise God. Just sing. Sing and dance. At home. Anywhere you are. Sing. That is why I, I don't always agree with Christians who believe they can sing uh, the songs of Rihanna and Beyonce and all that. And, I, and I'm like, what, what are you kidding? Where is the praise of God in those kind of things? And just one, one hymn or song so that people cannot sing offhand. But they can sing and tell you, Rihanna sang that 2010, sang that 2012. Mm -hmm. Are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. Music and songs are spiritual things. <coughs> Go ahead and praise the Lord this morning. Thank you, Father. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. We give you the worship. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. We give you the worship. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want you to join me to pray. Can you be on your feet? You've been sitting, so I don't want people dozing off. Just be on your feet for one, one, one or two minutes. Say after me, oh Lord, oh Lord, I thank you for your word. I, I receive this as your word this morning. Your word to me, I believe this as your word. I take in this word. This word must be a blessing to my spirit, to my soul, and to my body. Oh Lord, 
as I have praised you, and as I continue to praise you, I ask that you will set an ambush against all my enemies and discomfit them in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, as I have praised you, and as I continue to praise you, I ask that you set an ambushment against all my enemies and destroy them in the name of Jesus Christ. Go ahead and pray for one minute. Set an ambushment like you did against the people of Moab and Marcia and Ammon, against all things that constitute enemies to you, whatever that enemy is, enemy to your health, enemy to your fruitfulness, enemy to your progress, enemy to your success, enemy to the progress of your children, to the progress of your husband or wife, enemy to the progress of Grace Life International. In this month, Lord, as we praise you, set an ambushment against that altar of wickedness, against that altar of witches and wizards, against that altar of the occult, set an ambushment against every enemy of our health, of our our, our blessings of our prosperity of our finances of our homes and marriages in the mighty name of Jesus Christ say oh Lord let our praises provoke victories in every area of our lives oh Lord let our praises provoke victories in every area of our lives go ahead and pray one second oh Lord let our praises even in this month provoke cause you to give us victory in every area of our lives wherever we have suffered defeat wherever we are not making progress wherever there are limitations and obstacles give us victory as we praise you in this month may we know this victory where we have fallen may we rise where things have been taken from us may they be restored in the mighty name of jesus christ say oh lord let our praises draw you into our midst and make manifest your presence oh lord let our praises draw you into our midst and make manifest your presence among us in the name of jesus oh lord say after me let our praises cause an earthquake of deliverance from every prison from every cage of the enemy and from every chain in the name of jesus christ thank you father we give you the glory we give you the praise in jesus mighty name we pray Amen. let's just pray for this brethren thank god for sister francisca the procedure she had just ask the lord this morning to perfect the healing Amen. of our body and our brother manu no complication no issues arising from these issues we take authority over and against every every affliction in any way the enemy is attacking this household of faith let's pray for sister celoria sister celoria uh, uh, one of the mamas from jamaica who've been worshiping with us she just talked about challenges she and her family are facing let's lift them up unto the lord and any other person you know who is not feeling very well let's pray for mama Bessie. pray for mama Bessie. Uh, Mama Esther, we've not seen her for a while. Let's let's lift all the, the elderly among us up unto the Lord. Pray for Dorothy Foster. Lift them up. Esther Grant, Dorothy Foster, Bessie Arrow, Siloria. Lift them up unto the Lord this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, perfect the healing of the bodies of your people. Stabilize their health in the mighty name of Jesus. Total restoration, total healing. We give you the glory, give you the praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May we be seated. Amen. Amen.